Hello! Yes, there is a sponsored element to this video, but fear not, it is not to do with the normal mystery boxes. It is from Dollar Shave Club, and will be coming up later. And first, it's not a loot crate, because I haven't been sent one this month, so we've got Geek Gear to begin with, which always has the pleasing wood effect on the box. Let's see what joys they have been firing over to us on this merry month of... I want to say merry month of May, which doesn't really work, because it's the end of March, but never mind. Right, T-shirt first. We have... Ready Player One, which I've not yet seen the film of, so it's hard to uh, describe whether this is a thing, which is a quest I will want to join. Well, looks a bit Last Starfighter, that, doesn't it? Awful lot of uh, space invaders around. There's the Iron Giant. The Iron Giant is in the trailer, shooting things. And, like, wasn't the whole point of the Iron Giant that he chose not to be a gun? Anyway, there, there's a person with 101 on it, and stuff's going on. Hmm, nice soft uh, fabric. I can live with that. We also have, again from Ready Player One, the Crystal Key Keyring. Hmm. And again. Hmm. Warning, this bag is not a toilet. I wasn't going to play with the bag. Or was I? It feels a bit sort of uh, flimsy. It's just metal with a bit of sort of enamel printing on and yeah. It's, uh, I'm not entirely sure I'd be using that as a key ring. This is a bit too uh, soft. It could be bending up and then sticking in your leg or something. Don't worry, here's a large enamel mug. It's got Kylo Ren on it from that there famous Star Wars films. Can we remove this fairly easily? Yes, we can. Oh, good, good. That is a large mug. My goodness. And it certainly is enamelled metal. Well, there we are. If you have um, some drinks... Oh, not suitable for use in a dishwasher. Ah, oh, or microwave. Well, I can guess microwave is made of metal, but... Oh, well. Um, if you do need a large enamelled mug with some sort of chipping near the top, this is exactly what you could rule the galaxy with, apparently. Hmm. I don't know, this, this put me off a bit of that. It's also put me off that you can't put it in the dishwasher, because oh, that's a bit of a hassle, isn't it? Next up, it's... Oh, more... <laughs> It's a very good uh, box for thirsty people this month. It is a large glass with Harley Quinn on it. Hmm, go on then. From Gotham Girls. Blimey. Um, was that a specific comic? I can't remember now. Harley Quinn, and it's got some, you know, um, trapezoids with fire in. And on the other side, her mask and her grin. Well, it's a decent glass, and it's got some stuff in it. Um, can you put this one in the dishwasher? That is a good question. You'd think it would say. Important, hand wash only with warm water. Why, I order. Yes, yeah, this will come off if you put it in the dishwasher, presumably. Oh, well, that's a shame. This is a very negative uh, box for people who like dishwashers. There's a book. I've got so many of these books now. A Rogue One book with the Death Trooper on it. And it lights up. Press the Empire symbol. <laughs> Not entirely sure I needed that on the front of a book. Um, what is it? Make it inside. It seems to be a very high quality one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a really nice book. Ah, uh, it's got Death Trooper and Galactic Empire Elite Force on it. Ah, so it's more, more one for children, which certainly the non flat cover with LEDs in would certainly be hinting at. Right, what is next? The Sea of Thieves comic? That's a, something of a surprising one. Well, I'm going to presume that, that is a tie in with that game, which uh, everyone's moaning about because there's not much progression in it or something. I don't know, I haven't played it. Um, and it's a specific Geek Gear one, it's got the logo on. Oh, well, Titan Comics 01 Sea of Thieves. If you would like to read a comic about a sea that's full of people who nick stuff, this is probably a good start. Um, let's have a look at this. Come on, come on, you know you want to come out. Uh, on the back there's a big advert for Sea of Thieves, which we did um, yes, uh, sort of work out. Well, it's got some nice art in it. Um, yeah, it seems to be like a proper thing as opposed to just here's a quick ad, which is something. But yeah, well, that's surprising. I was not expecting to see something like that. Next up, there is something else, isn't there? Yes, there's always an art print in these, and this one is Rick and Morty from Adult Swim. That's quite nice. It's actually more detailed than the cartoon. A little bit of a shading there. From Morty looking worried as Rick is looking drunk and his uh, weird flying saucer mobile spews out a load of green gunk. Because why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't it? Answer? Because that's probably a really dangerous thing to do. But what does Rick care? He is drunk, like, all the time. And his is a, th a thing that tells you what you've already got. Bloody hell, the RRP of that keyring is six pounds? Oh, come on, you're not telling me that comic is eight pounds. What comic costs eight pounds? Come on, guys. I believe you not. So let's jump to the next box. It's time for the sponsored part of the video from Dollar Shave Club. Shave time, shave money.
That sounds like a direct quote from Sean Connery, but it probably isn't. Yes, this is a box that you pay for and it gets sent to you through the post and it's got some stuff in it. But the stuff inside is exclusively for the removal of hair from the human face, which is something most men have to do on a fairly regular basis. So yes, the idea is that they send you a nice razor handle and some razor blades, and then when the razor blades have gone all dull and rubbish, they send you some fresh ones. And you don't have to bother going to the shops and it all works out a bit cheaper. So what's inside the box then? Well, if you guessed some razor blades and razor handle, you are absolutely correct. Welcome to your better bathroom. It just got a lot cooler in there. Yes, as part of the service, Dollar Shave Club will come round your house and turn off the heating in your bathroom. Not really, that would be weird. Right, let's have a quick look at the blades then. They are those sort of modern blades with multiple bits of metal for the removal of the hairs, and a nice ergonomic handle with a nice uh, feeling rubber tactile bit so it doesn't slip in your hand while you're shaving. There we are, all angles and that, and is ready for the shavings. I want to see what's in this box that they sent. I ripped off the um, security bit earlier and then read on the top, you have a very important decision to make, and frankly it felt a bit early in the morning to be making important decisions. Anyway, it is a critic... <laughs> This is a sorry, just see, the shit shower and shave trial kit. <laughs> that is not a phrase I thought I would be using in a sponsored video, but there we are. Perfect the basics with these bits and bobs. Right, what have we got? We have got One Wipe Charlie. Oh yes, I've been warned of this. Minty tingle, soothing and refreshing. That's not for wiping your face, that's for wiping your other end. Your bum. Body cleanser, sulfate free. Oh, I know how you guys hate sulfates. And the scent of abander. Ab ab the scent of abander. Yes, abander is a new word for the combination of amber and lavender. You heard it here first. And shave butter, maximum glide, and it fights razor bumps. Razor bumps sounds like a villain from an 80s cartoon. It's quite impressive it can fight that. Right, let's have a quick sniff at Wanderer. Ab sorry, abander body cleanser. Yep, that smells exactly as one would expect. Amber and lavender. And Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter. That's uh, Dr. Carver. Also sounds like a villain from an 80s cartoon, actually. Mm, that's a more subtle fragrance, but it is quite pleasant. And of course, One Wipe Charlie's. You know where you can stick these. Aloe vera and chamomile, the civilised way to, way to wipe. Little butler on there. I've got just the thing, sir. Oh my god, it looks like Alfred from Batman. Do you think Alfred follows Batman into the toilet and hands him toilet paper? Man, the life of a butler. That doesn't bear thinking about. So yes, the shave butter, I believe, is available now. The One Wipe Charlie and Body Cleanser are coming soon. And they have various other shaving products if you are into such things. I'm also going to show you quickly this rather nice wash bag I sent called the uh, DSC Traveller. Let's take this club on the road. Yeah, and it's just quite a very uh, hard wearing and waterproof bag and you can fit an awful lot of stuff in it. So if you're somebody who needs to take a lot of wash products with you, this is like a really good way of doing it. Personally, I don't need something so big because I'm a filthy tramp. Anyway, if you'd like to get in on this Dollar Shave Club action, as ever, there is a uh, link in the description below you can follow. Okay, there ends the sponsored part of the video. Let us look at some more boxes of stuff. <whistles> Boom! It is the giant amazing mystery box, which always has slightly older stuff in, but like a huge amount of it for your money. Right, what have we got in? Oh my god, there's an awful lot of bits and bobs going on. Let's start off with the t-shirt. Oh, it's a Funko Pop rendition of Hodor. <laughs> Christian Nans in, uh, yeah, loaf-headed form. Great. How much did I want a t-shirt with a Funko Pop on? I'll be honest, not a lot. Oh, it's really nice material as well, that is a shame. Right, there's also a hat. A hat to cover your shameful naked head from Call of Duty Infin Infinite Warfare. I was going to say Infinity Ward then, but that's actually a company that makes games. Special Combat Air Recon, Scar. It's got a skull which is having the pains. That's not a bad hat, actually. Weirdly, I need a cap for something. I've got to record some audio, um, and the way I'm going to do it is have a little microphone attached to the peak of the cap. And I can use this cap for that, so that's bloody marvellous. Right, it was a blind bag. Figure Mascot Series 3. Oh my goodness. Wow, these, these are chibi to the max. Two stickers included as well, so you can have a holographic figure of whatever it is. I'm quite enjoying uh, Black Widow's hair there, but that's about it for that. Hmm, I think this is something we will keep for a future blind bag video, because I've only got a million blind bags, I'd like more, frankly. Oh my god, I've got one of these in something before! Dreaded Pikachu hat with um, giant uh, pom-poms on it. 
Unfortunately, hats like this now just remind me of Logan Paul and his horrifying antics in a Japanese forest, so um, that's taken the joy off a bit for me. But one day, that will fade, and I will just be left with a nice knitted Pikachu. I'll tell you what, that'd really keep your head warm, actually. Right, Star Trek 50. Oh my god! Chibis! Oh. Do you know, really, I used that phrase, having not heard it for a while, and suddenly it's printed in front of me. Complete set. Includes all 12 characters, plus special edition Gold, Spock and Kirk. Well, these are clearly based on the original series, because that genuinely looks a bit like um, Leonard Nimoy, despite the fact it doesn't have much detail on it. Um, well, yep, here's all the guys. I'm going to get them out of the box, actually. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? There we are, there's... Um, oh man, I can't remember the character's name. She was in the earlier episodes, so that's going to really bug me now. There's a Captain Kirk looking smug. There's that guy whose name I can't remember. He was a villain. There's the um, sort of rubbery monster that Kirk famously fights. I can't remember the name of that either. All the Star Trek names have totally gone out of my head. There's Khan, or Ricardo Montalban. There we are. I can remember his real name, but not the bloody character names of the other ones. That's, uh, I don't know, Chekhov? Or is that... Uh, well, actually, I'm confused. Which one is Kirk? And which one is Chekhov? I reckon that one's Kirk, actually, because it looks more smug. And that would make that one Chekhov. Um, there's old uh, DeForest Kelly. I love that name, DeForest Kelly. It's like the most anti-ecologically friendly name in the world. Old uh, Dr. McCoy. We've got Scotty. She can it. Oh, I'm not going to do the impression. Well, it's almost impossible not to say she can he take it, Captain, when you see something to do with Scotty. There is Spock even giving you the Vulcan salute. That will be old Sulu. There's a very miserable alien that used to appear, I believe, at, in the end credits, didn't it? A very furrowed brow going on. And, of course, we've got the mighty Ahura and some silvery, goldy ones. Are they both gold? Or oh, there's one silver and one gold? They're both gold edition. It's fairly light gold. It looks kind of silvery. Oh no, actually, actually, when I stopped looking through the viewfinder and looked with my actual eyes directly at it, they are quite clearly gold. Well, there's a little set of things for people who like such things. I want to see what they're made out of. Are they plastic? Or are they metal? Or... We may never know. They are plastic. Well, and there we are. I'm so sorry I've forgotten your character's name. Please, sit over here. And if I remember it, I'll suddenly shout it out. I won't remember it. Right. It's... oh god. Plus, the return of Davros. I'm really enjoying that uh, expression of his face there. Well, this is a little sort of uh, lenticular art print of No power in the universe can stop the Daleks. You will be exterminated! And all that kind of stuff. Um, this is a really sort of standout. This is one of the better 3D things I've seen, Lenticto. It really does look like it's standing out of the page, which is completely impossible to show you at home in 2D, but that is genuinely quite impressive. I'm presuming this is an old cover of a comic book that they have um, given a bit of a 3D lenticular process to. Or maybe it's one they've mocked up. I'd have no idea. Well, that's quite nifty, either way. Right, next... Oh my god! Ooh, well, I'll come back to that, because that's absolutely massive. There is also a Sherlock keyring from 221B on Baker Street. That doesn't exist, really. The numbers don't go up that high. But I believe that if you send um, post to that address, it goes to the Sherlock Holmes Museum. So that's a bit of interest for you. And there's old Humberdink Bandersnatch himself in profile. That's quite a strong bit of rubber. Oh, that'd work quite well on that. I just wish it didn't have so many bloody logos on the back, because it does ruin the aesthetics a bit. But if you look from that way, it is nice. And a bloody great backpack. With various Marvel comic characters, all your same, all your favourites look. Green Jim, Horn Hat Harry, Yellow Pete, Red Cecil, and Blue Susan. All your favourites. Right, let's have a look. Oh, that's all right, isn't it? Um, big old backpack. Unfortunately, I've just like reviewed a really nice backpack that I'm keeping, so I'm actually all right for backpacks now, but uh, I quite enjoy the colour scheme on this. It's very bright and pleasing. I tell you what, to give this to the kids to take to school with all their school books in that they can then lose that you have to pay for and it costs you a fortune, there is probably a very good reason for having this. And a bit of netting at the side. For putting your water bottle in so that it falls out when you cross a road quickly. Or at least it always does in my experience. That is rather nice. Well, that's a very disparate and very interesting lot of stuff here, Cash, there. And it has a tiny, angry Ricardo Montalban. So, you know, I don't see any downsides to this, frankly. The only major disappointment is that there's a bloody Funko Pop on the t-shirt. And now it's food time, courtesy of Munchpack. Delicious snacks delivered. And this time picked by Francis. Thank you, Francis. We will rip it, tear it, and use our teeth. I'm slightly worried about that. Right. Inside this month we have... 
Al Chipino. Try a new angle. Peri Peri. Favour crisps, right? Let's give these a shot. Well, they smell like slightly spicy crisps, as one would expect. Hmm. Oh, that was really nice. The Peri Peri is actually quite subtle, but it's still got a nice tang to it. Imagine if you ate like the whole bag really quickly, it'd get a bit hot, but it's not going to blow your head off. Mmm, they're good, I like those. Kyo's crisps, grown with love in Ireland, shamrock and sour cream. I've had these before, I'm sure I've had these before, I think they might come up in one of these boxes before actually. Um, well, let's uh, give it a shot, I can't remember what they tasted like, they don't smell of much. Mmm, um, not a huge fan of sour cream, but yeah they're fine. And they're gluten-free and love the taste in a heart, so you know, you can't argue with that. It's this from Lion. <laughs> I don't know, it's fizzy drink sweetie things. Does it sound here what they are? Hard candy, Ramuna candy. Okay, well let's uh, open this up and then spend half an hour trying to get into this thing because it looks really fiddly and awkward and it's a resealable thing. And I'm just going to have to keep on talking or we end up with dead air. That's exciting, isn't it? Right, ah, uh, here we are. Oh god, they certainly are hard candy. What do they taste of? Hmm. Oh yeah, a bit of sherbet into making fizzy. Hmm. Slightly, slightly off. Sort of. Uh, do I just got cream sodery taste perhaps? Hmm. Really not enjoying those. Nope. I'm gonna have to spit that out. Oh dear. Next up, it's a star bar. I really like star bars. These are Cadbury chocolate bars that have nuts and stuff in, but also they're very slightly salty. I really like them. Um, a chewy Cosmos pe peanuts and caramel. I know I really like them because, like, you can just buy them in the shops over here. So, uh, as much as I like a star bar, that's not a very exotic treat. But not to worry because we've got some very, very Polish sounding iCar. I'm not even going to pretend to, I can pronounce that because I'll just get it horribly wrong. Right. Quite interested by this. It's chocolate with something inside. Sort of uh, hard caramelly stuff. Um, mm. It's got that slightly sour, sort of sour milk edge to it that some stuff has. Um, chocolate's quite dark as well. It's one of those things that doesn't actually taste very sweet, but it's probably still full of sugar. Um, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of that. That's a bit bitter for my liking. Oh no, it is tea. Ready tea with cannula. I thought cannula was a language, so that could be... Oh, black tea with cinnamon. There we are, so cannula. Also, oh, there is like a spicy cinnamon thing, but cannula. We spell it with two L's, though, I believe. I don't know what language this box is in. Portuguese, maybe? Ah, it's from Brazil. So there we are. There is the answer to that. Um, I hate all tea, so this will be awful. But I will give it to... Oh, I was going to say my girlfriend really likes tea, but not generally the spicy sort of cinnamony ones. So I think this is one of those things that is going to sit in the cupboard for like five years in the hope that somebody has some and then eventually we throw it away. Hooray! Miggy's Bit Bits! That sounds like a sort of weird colloquialism for some sort of disease, but Rice Krispies covered in chocolatey fun! So when you say chocolatey fun you mean not actually chocolate? Strawberry cheesecake artificially flavoured. Mm. Well, let's give it a shot then. Probably going to taste like chemicals. Oh, they're remarkably, um, remarkably hard and smooth and shiny, like they've been lacquered. Um, they taste fine. Uh, sweet white chocolate, you've got that sort of, um, you know, I wouldn't call it cheesecake, but a sort of slight white chocolate and strawberry here. Um, they're not bad. Actually, they are not bad. King Jelly. King Jelly is here to judge you all with his 30% pilot slug. Um, yes, I only know this is called King Jelly because I just read it on the little sticker on the back. Right, I'm going to guess it's a jelly sweet of some kind. Uh, let's have this one. Oh, Lord. Oh, it looks like a sort of weird flatfish or something with a funny weird face on it. Hmm. Well, well, that's good. What does it taste like? Oh, blimey. Slightly medicinal taste. Yeah. Um... Weird. It tastes like fruit-flavoured medicine, if that makes any sense. Not unpleasant, but not fantastic. Silhouette rolled wafers. French truffle lined. Delicate, light, crispy wafers with gourmet truffle lining. We're trying so hard to be posh. Please believe us. Right, let's try a bit. These things are usually pretty nice, aren't they? Rolled wafer with chocolate on the inside. Mm, oh, God, they're light. The slightest pressure, it crumbled into nothing. Hmm. They're very nice. Yeah. High quality wafer, 
and just a little hint of chocolate. Um, or French truffle, I suppose, but yeah, it tastes more chocolatey to me. Little hint of something nutty, that'll be the truffleness. Yeah, those are good. Those are proper good. Bourbon present what looks like my friend Ben Allen holding an axe because he's chopped the trees down to hassle the pink rabbits and the uh, squirrel. The squirrel doesn't look particularly worried. I tell you, when I watched the animals of Farthing Wood, they were furious it was being cut down. Anyway, I don't really know what these are. Little chocolate things, maybe? I am not sure, and I'm still not sure. I should have opened these beforehand. Right. Oh, that's funny. Oh, they're like little crackers with chocolate around. Oh. Hmm. They're quite good, actually. Wheaty. Very wheaty crackers. The chocolate's quite good. Those are nice. Really like those. And finally, Bebeto soft drinks jelly gum. Yep, they're basically cola bottles with a couple of other flavours. Right, let's sample the cola bottle first. Hmm. Mmm, yeah. They are decent cola bottles. Slightly... not the most highly flavoured ones, but they're not at all bad. And what other flavours have they got, do you think? I'm going to try the green. It seems to be green and orange seems to be the other ones. What do the green taste of? Nothing so far. Hmm. I don't know, that's a very subtle flavour. Kind of... Hmm. Lemonade, I suppose? As close as I'd get, and I'll bite the orange bit off. This has got to be orange age, surely. Yes, that's got quite an orangey tang to it, actually. That's probably the most highly flavoured of the three. Hmm. Not bad. Not a bad desserty note to end on. So, overall then, um, Munch Pack was interesting stuff, as ever. The amazing mystery box is full of a lot of uh, interesting, very disparate items, which is always good. And uh, Geek Gear was a little bit of a disappointment, really. It was mostly for people who wanted, like, large beverage containers that they can't put in their dishwasher. Also, big thanks to Dollar Shave Club for the sponsorship, because now it means I can buy some more other computers. Yay! Subscribe for more.